If you're a fan of our show and content, you'll know that I've worked in both very large freight brokerages and a few smaller ones. I've also had the pleasure of coaching freight brokers in every size organization. And the one thing that everyone has in common is the goal. It's to locate, contact, and eventually close prospects, turning them from a phone number and a name on a list to a valuable asset of your business. But how we go about it can be worlds apart. Well, in this video, I'll cover four tips to succeed in selling third-party logistics services at the large big box freight brokerages. I'm Benjamin Kowalski with Freight360, where we provide the latest transportation sales tips and training videos to help you reach your goals faster. If you're a fan of the content, please support us by crushing that like button and sharing us with all of your colleagues. And for more info on our Freight Broker course, Freight Broker Basics, be sure to click the link in the show notes or go to Freight360.net for more free training material. Okay. Let's start with why big box freight brokerages created the framework that the salespeople actually operate in. You know, they have lots of employees, lots of customers, and lots of people to train and support. And the first hurdle with a company of that size is also the size of its sales staff. While the bigger the staff is, generally the more revenue and opportunities it can create. It's pretty obvious, right? But there's also a drawback to managing a staff that is that large. How do you keep everything fair and equal without eliminating a sense of competition amongst your sales staff? Well, it's done through prospecting systems and approvals and how each lead or opportunity will be assigned to each freight broker on the sales floor. So if I take you all the way back to the early 2000s, right? There were plenty of stories of heated arguments and fistfights over whose prospect a company actually was. And why is that, you say? Well, because let's say, let's take you through an example. If you called someone, we'll say a few times last month or maybe the month before from the same company as I did, but you were the one that built the initial rapport, the relationship and the trust with that individual, you know, the really difficult part of getting a customer. But myself, I just happened to call them a few weeks later and that person just happened to need help with a shipment that day. Well, then I would typically get credit for closing that customer and then I would be the one earning all of the commissions from that relationship. So you can imagine how heated the debates were on whose prospect was assigned to who and how long you could actually work that prospect as a lead before it went up for grabs again for somebody else to make some progress on it. Now, the answer to this at most companies, especially the large ones, is a formal prospecting system with predetermined amounts of time allocated to a specific sales rep or freight broker to flip that prospect into an actual customer. And then after a certain amount of time, and it's usually 45 days or maybe 90 days, you may be able to submit a request for an extension to keep working that prospect if and only if you could substantiate, prove that you have enough evidence of, pros of progress with that actual lead. So for example, you would want really accurate call notes logged into your CRM outlining all of the progress and conversations that you've had that show that business is gonna be coming from this lead shortly. Because if not, it's gonna go back into the pool of leads that can be snapped up by the other brokers looking to pursue them themselves. And when big name prospects or accounts can mean big money, there's a lot of competition to get a company name assigned to you before you can even start the process of prospecting them. So tip one, Prospects are valuable. And just because a company might not need your brokerage services immediately or today, does not mean it's not a valuable prospect to pursue and follow up with. At the large freight brokerages, it's very difficult to get leads in your name, especially the ones that are in season. So many brokers will start working leads as soon as they get them and are very, very much on top of each call to make sure that they retain ownership of that lead until that shipper has an issue large enough for them to call for assistance. And a little hint here, those calls, just like the problems shippers run into, fallouts, missed pickups, wrong equipment showing up, those are usually the causes for that shipper to call a freight broker 
could get some help or give them a shot on their first load or their shipment, right? That's where our opportunities come from. So you always need to be prepared for the unexpected. Luck, remember, is where preparation meets opportunity. Tip number two, keeping accurate notes for prospect extensions may be the motivation to start this habit at first, but after a few weeks, it becomes one of the most valuable habits to a freight brokerage sales agent because it's much easier to make progress on each call when you have a summary of your last call and what was relevant to your prospect, okay? Most salespeople only update their CRMs with positive information. And that's exactly the opposite of really what you want. What you need to move a prospect forward in the sales cycle are the reasons actually holding them back. Not just the fluffy niceties that we use when what we really mean is no or not now. So put yourself in the shoes of your prospect for a moment and ask yourself this question. What your reasons might be for giving somebody else the same response that you just heard from them, right? Okay, so what you say. What does this have to do with succeeding and making more money at the large freight brokerages? Well, the sales approach in a company like this doesn't allow most people to just choose companies at random to prospect. You have to put your name on a waiting list for the companies you really want or think you have the best shot at closing. And this is gonna take time. As a rookie, you only have a handful of months typically to prove you can create opportunities for this freight brokerage. So what are your choices? Simple. You can put in a general category like steel or lumber into the company's CRM and spray and pray. Just like in, we'll say, the front lines of like the Revolutionary War, right? Think back to the 1700s. The infantry, the guys on the front line, they might not be aiming at anyone or anything in particular. They're just firing in general directions of a group of combatants in the hopes that they'll take out a few or at least have some impact. That's the sales approach you're left with. And it can, be very, it can be leveraged to get very good at sales, okay? So tip three, look at this difficult process of spray and pray as an opportunity. The reason it's great training ground for freight brokerage sales is because it's inherently difficult. Like boot camp in the military, it's designed to be hard to sharpen your skills and increase your chance of survival in the industry. It takes hard work every day to be consistent with your phone calls and your outreach to make progress. So it goes the old saying, steel sharpens steel. It's why most larger companies have very high expectations for outbound activity. Because if you can't make calls most of the time you're in the office, your chances of success are very, very low. But for those that can persevere, it gives you the repetitions you really need to become an expert at selling in this industry. And that's an expert at utilizing your voice as a tool, an expert at asking the right questions, and an expert at listening, most important of all, right? And not just listening to respond, but actually listening to understand what's being said to you. Because hearing what your prospect needs isn't always as clear as listening to what they're just saying. This is one of the main reasons why we suggest high volumes of calls for rookies. Because you can watch someone ride a bike on YouTube for thousands of hours, and none of it will prepare you to actually ride a bike like getting on it, trying, and then falling off. You can't build expertise by watching somebody else do what they're trained to do. You have to get in there and do the hard, scary work of putting yourself in a position to be rejected, and then to do it over and over and over again until it becomes second nature to you. So if you're a rookie at one of the larger freight brokerages and want to know how to leverage the system for the most success, tip four, flip the problems on their head. Look at the obstacles as opportunities. Instead of getting frustrated at leads you can't get assigned to you, look in places that no one else is. It's likely your real obstacle is groupthink. Move in the opposite direction of the masses. Learn from the freight brokers that are closing the most business and then try to replicate what their accounts have in common with other areas overlooked in the industry. And some examples of this can be freight brokerage niches that we've talked about on the show a lot, like specializing in cross-border moves, maybe into Mexico. 
Maybe at your company, no one is an expert at expedited. Maybe white glove shipments around airports are an opportunity. Maybe it's in learning how the rail terminals and ports use drayage carriers to move the cargo in and out of the country. What matters is that you begin looking for missed opportunities, not just pitying yourself because you didn't get Target or Walmart assigned to you this year. Now, as a recap, look at the prospecting system not as a hurdle, but more like sales boot camp. If you can make it to the other side, it's a hell of a way to learn freight brokerage sales fast. Keep accurate notes in your CRM, not just because it will make your case for prospect approval more likely, but also because it's a great habit that all top sales professionals use in every sales industry to close more business. And lastly, don't be learning and be aware of groupthink, okay? If you're at the very large brokerages, the first obstacle to closing prospects is having them assigned to you. So look for economic indicators in the existing accounts everyone else is fighting for, and then apply those principles to areas, other areas, right, of the supply chain that no one is looking at or paying attention to. For more tips on building successful freight brokerages, check out our website, freight360.net. And for more information on our freight broker course, Freight Broker Basics, where you'll learn everything you need to know about earning a living as a freight broker and what it takes to build a successful freight brokerage. And remember, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right.